OSL stands for Open Shading Language, and it was developed by Sony Imageworks as an open standard for engines to be able to use. It's used everywhere from RenderMan and Arnold, V-Ray and others, and in many of the softwares it is now supported. This is great because as an open shading language, we can be able to port textures from one uh, engine to another and expect exactly the same results as opposed to getting varied changes or having to try and convert all the nodes from one to the other. So what I mean by this, if we have a look at the shader that's driving the ground, there it is there. And we have a couple of uh, things plugged in here. So we've got the channel, the channel two um, being used as a mask. So this is a map channel two is being used as a map mask to mask together three textures, our, our grass, the stone texture, and a dirt texture. Now what you'll notice is these are using a triplanar to be able to mix them, to, you know, to be able to drive the textures. Good reason for this, dry planar um, projects in you know, the object space from the top, from the side, and from the front, and blends over the uh, sides and the angles. This means we don't actually need to do any unwrapping, or we don't need to be concerned with how the ground plane is actually being affected if the polygons change, like when we're using the optimized to optimize it down. It really doesn't make any difference because they're being projected. So where did I get this triplanar from and what does it actually mean? Well, OSL is an open shading language. This is the, the coding for the triplanar. And you can code your own. You could make changes here and save it back into the scene by just unlocking it. You can write your own and they can actually reside directly in the scene or you can save them back to your hard drive and utilize them right on your hard drive and load with Max to become available to you. You'll notice uh, that I have uh, a couple. I've got MD shaders here as well as I have the triplanar node right here that I can pull out and use. I grabbed that triplanar from uh, GitHub from Mad's site here and I scroll down and find found the triplanar, and you'll notice there's actually two of them. There aren't always two. The OSL is the one that's necessary to make it work, but in this case, there's also a .ui file as well. Both of these are necessary to get access. The OSL is the base code that makes it function. The UI is strictly to be able to enhance the UI and give you more features. Once downloaded, simply copy them into your Max install into the OSL folder and restart Max. They'll become available to you. It's that simple. So how does this shader work on the ground and how is it affected by the uh, changes of the form of the ground as things are moved around? So if you remember, I can take the ground select object here that's giving us the you know, rise in the ground for the house and we can move that around and we can see that all the shaders are updating. So the way this is being done is by using the data channel modifiers. Each time that we have a selection being created by the volume select, it's passing that selection up to data channel. And data channel is doing something very simple. When you add operators, you can create all kinds of things that will you know, interact with the vertex data. So in this case, it's taking the vertex input and it's taking the selection and it's outputting that data back into map channel two in just the X channel in this case. So it's placing it into the X channel because a mask like this only needs to be in one channel. We don't need R, G, and B. We just need a grayscale value. The next one's doing the same thing. This is pushing down into the river in this case. It's bringing in the vertex selection again from the volume select previous to it. We used a scale so that we can actually scale that value up and down so we can uh, adjust how the ground is being affected. So you can see that I can blur it up and down. Using a smooth, the smooth also uh, is then is kind of smoothing out the transitions. And I'm outputting this one now, map channel two, but into the Y channel. And back at the very top again, this one's for the silo. And it is doing the same thing. And it's adding it into map channel two into the Y again to get the dirt. But in this case, we're using an add. So I'm adding on to the dirt that's being uh, placed in the river. In the material itself, I'm grabbing that map channel 2 
and I'm breaking it up in with the components here in RNG or X and Y. Now you'll notice I have a clamp node in here. Now you could clamp it also in data channel, but I found it was much better to do it here. And I'm clamping the values between zero and one, black and white effectively. Reason being is, is that when the two selections in Y from the silo and the river overlap, they would push the values above one and you'd start getting some blown out results. So I'm just clamping those map channel values, then pulling the components and I'm using interpolate OSL nodes to be able to interpolate the colors together. So I'm mixing basically the grass and the ground and I'm mixing in again the dirt values using their separate channels. A little bit of color correction going on in places to uh, tweak the colors and then into my physical material. It's that simple to be able to pull that off. Another thing I'm using OSL for is to do some randomized colors. You'll notice all these rocks have slight variations and tones in their color. Now, if I grab any one of them and just drag it out, you'll notice that once again, it has a very slight variation in its color. I can enhance that as well if I like, as I move them around, I can play around with those colors in all sorts of ways. But here's what the shader looks like. So we've got the physical material again, and we're using the triplanar to project onto the objects, so I don't need the unwraps in this case. But to get the randomization, I'm using this random by index OSL. And what it does, it allows us to create uh, colors um, that are gonna be randomized by this input index. And the index is gonna be the node handle. So every object in 3ds Max is given a new node handle, a new ID number. So it becomes the seed that starts it all off and, and comes up with a random value. And then using a OSL composite node to take the stone texture and to composite together the, the color on top. So I'm using a color dodge and I'm color dodging these colors on top of the stones. Now, one of the nice things about the random in uh, by index, I can also say random per component. So if you hang over, it'll tell you it's going to randomize the RGB differently. So if I check that off, you'll see now they're all varied colors. So you could adjust your color inputs to get something a little different, but this is gonna mean that each time you copy it out, you're gonna get something completely different at this point. Now, I didn't want that much variation. I wanted it subtle and just kind of variations of these tones on top, so I left it off and I'm getting nice variations. Now, another thing I wanted to do is I wanted to vary them on things like the grasses as well as the rocks. I wanted to be able to get variations. So these little stones. Now, the problem with these little stones is they only have one ID. That's because they're a single object, and but I still wanted that slight variation in color around them and not have them all the same. So to do that, I'm using data channel again and in the, using a distort and the distort allows me to use a texture map to create a distortion of values. The distort is taking an input of this uber noise and now I've set the uber noise to be a cell value, played around with the scale some and some of the values but just a black and white and what it does is it allows us to be able to create sort of a selection. Now this is happening in the object space, so the space of the object, so the entire collection of the stones, because it's one object. And then I'm using a material to be able to, you know, mix some of that together. So once again, the data channel is taking in a distort. It's using a geo-quantize, which just sounds cool in itself, but what it does is it takes an average of the vertices of each element and it sets the average for all of them. So in this case, I'm taking what of the average of the distortion color is for each element, and I'm setting it to every vertex. And then the output is just into map channel two again in the X. And then the material, I'm just using that as a mix again. So you'll notice that I'm using a map channels here. This will be map channel two, and it's blending it into it, and it's blending it out, and I'm just using the R channel again to be able to get those averages. Now this material is being used elsewhere, and this extra composite on top is for creating moss on top of rocks if I want to get that effect as well.
The Anukshuk is a good example of this. So if you see, if I rotate the Anukshuk around, you'll see the moss always stays on top. So once again, I'm using the data channel modifier to handle that. So here's the distort that is distorting the variations of element colors. And then I have another input set up, and this one's bringing in average normals. So it's getting the average normal that they always point. The next one is a vector input node, and that vector input node is just pointing straight up. It's a Z, but what I've set it to when you right click is the dot product. With a little math knowledge, you can understand that I can get a value back from those as to which of the vertices are pointing up. I'm doing a little scaling on it to be able to get more or less of an effect that I'm looking for. And then I'm outputting it out into map channel three in this case in the X. And that same material is handling that as well. So it's bringing in that map channel three and it's compositing on as just an uber noise in this case. So I'm not even using a texture map. I'm just using a, an uber noise to be able to get something that looks grass-like. And I'm using that map channel three to mix it and layer it on top using composite and an alpha. And then it's only compositing the, the moss on the up facing vertices in the model. This is a great way of setting things up and having it work real time and without having to mess around and go back to substance or some other texturing methods to be able to put moss on top of things. It's just automatic, it'll always be on top.